I've switched it on I've just plugged it in and switched it on cold so um, we'll see what happens it takes a fair while obviously that it's uh, it's not <laughs> it's far remote from uh, modern televisions and um, it takes a good few seconds for the um, whole set to warm up I can hear a I can hear a slight line whistle coming now so we might we might have a little bit of a look we might I'm not putting any sound through it at the moment um, because last time I put a vintage television on YouTube there we come there we come there is test card C oh it's not not too bad at all um, and as you can see if we probably just zoom in on that a little bit for you you can see it's not <coughs> it's not too bad a picture at all really it's it probably could do with a little bit of a focus it could just just the focus uh, moving shall we try and Well, there we go. We've got the picture to steady down a little bit. <clears throat> um, I don't. I don't know how this will video. Um, often, you you know, there's a certain amount of flicker on these televisions, which sometimes these cameras pick up a little bit on. Um, but hopefully, you can see that. Um, <clears throat> bearing in mind that this set is now coming up for 70 years old. That's. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that it's just <laughs> it's just I think the technical term for that it's just folded up the bottom again um, this set has a, a set of sliders at the back um, that you adjust things and and they are I think my sliders they're obviously like a variable resistor and I think mine are very worn um, we'll have a go and see if we can just adjust that again there we go it's um it's still it's still jittering about that a little bit, but um, <clears throat> overall I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to say this set hasn't been on for a good few months. <clears throat> and like I say, this is the, the you know an original picture tube, but it's no, nothing the, the set has only been restored capacitor-wise. This has got the valves. I've not even changed any valves in this set. Um, so it's quite remarkable, really, that um, after 70 years, bear in mind, like I say, this set was built in uh, September... 1949 and um, there we go we've folded at the bottom again um. this realm this England Well, there we go. We've now we've now got uh, an original 1950s program. This was a program and includes part of the Queen's coronation, which obviously was a key moment in British television. The cam cameras being allowed in to see the coronation, and obviously <clears throat> the demand for televisions was really colossal in 1953 at the coronation in June. Uh, this set. You know, um, predates that by a good few years, but obviously, I'm sure on Coronation Day was was pressed into service. As you can see, the it's got it's got jolly good sound. <laughs> this earth, this realm. And um, it must have been quite amazing when you think about it. We, as, a, as my generation, you know, have been grown up with television, but people had only had wireless, you know, radio, radio. And then to suddenly have like a wireless in the room, but it's got a screen and, and moving, you know, pictures that you could watch. The, as you can see, the picture is folded there again at the bottom. Um, I think I think my sliders need definitely adjusting, and I I can't really get to them to get it full adjusted. But I think that shows the set still gives quite a reasonable picture, you know, considering the set is 70 years old. Um, uh, it's quite amazing, really. Uh, you, there is a little bit of sound breakthrough as well. You can see when the sound speaks, the picture moves about a bit. Um, there again. Uh, I'll talk briefly about how I. 
put a picture on to a television of this age in, in a few moments. Um, But as I say, you know, as I say, considering considering the age of the set, I think it's um, it's quite remarkable, really. Overleaping waves and distance to the Ulster men and the Channel Islanders, and so by ocean waves around the world, link by welded link, the Commonwealth of Nations, the realms and territories of the Queen. It's just slightly. As you said, there's nothing wrong. It's got jolly good sound. This set, um, amazing. Uh, From St James's Palace, the words are read by the Queen. A proclamation declaring Her Majesty's pleasure, touching her royal coronation and the solemnity thereof, that all her realm shall know the Queen is to be crowned. comes to us in the sorrow of her father's so we'll leave it there because I might get into trouble for copyright on this if I play too much so we'll hold it there for a minute and um, obviously that lets you know the set is working okay and we'll, swi we'll switch the set off a minute so there we go we're back with test card C um, and just as a quick basic explanation how we actually make an old television produce a picture today if we move the camera around and slightly if I just have to lift it up and we look and we slightly zoom in you'll see um, I've got a little box I'll, I'll try and point it out this little box where the light is flashing that is uh, called an aurora spot with an a and basically that obviously converts obviously televisions uh, this is a, a, a British television so it runs on the old system of 405 lines which obviously was phased out in finally in 1985 the, the 405 signal was um, shut down at all the transmitters so obviously uh, to take to make a television work you have to uh, modulate a signal to 405 lines and feed it in the set and for many years that wasn't possible or it was possible it was very expensive you could have um, purpose-built boxes to do this which cost an awful lot of money and then a guy in America started making these um, little boxes as I say which are amazing and obviously that converts a signal and then you feed that into the television the test card C as we've got on at the moment is always in is like imprinted in the box and if we then if we actually then plug we've got a scart lead in a, in a normal um, this is just a normal very cheap I think it's a 995 would you believe a DVD player from eBay just an ordinary standard very cheap DVD player with a SCART lead coming into RCA type sockets so then what we do we're feeding the two sound uh, sockets into our Aurora converter and our video source and then that will convert them and then we've got the normal RF uh, lead coming round feeding into the television so obviously that means that you can um, put programs or have any DVD 
you want or you you could use an old video uh, video player with a SCART socket you could I, I've even um, connected an old television up to a skybox um, it's quite possible because you've only got to put the SCART lead in and then the RCA sockets go into the Aurora converter and then the aerial lead comes out the back of that and into the set and as you can see we have a we have the picture on the screen um, so it's very easy nowadays with these little boxes you know and I think we have um, an American guy actually designed and built these boxes they're not cheap by any means and I think he's having problems now actually um, getting the chips to, to build uh, anymore I've read that you know the num they are going to be ceased he he's going to have to cease production because he can't get the right chips apparently to um, to build them which is a shame because uh, it's a great way of keeping old televisions going and, and you know you can show old pictures you know um, and as I say it um, so that that's a it's, it's a very straightforward easy way the the Aurora has its doesn't have a power supply so down there we have a separate uh, 12 volt power supply feeding that and that's the only other thing so there's only that that's that little bit there is just feeding the signal into the television you know through that little box and it's coming from a DVD and into the television via that little wonderful gizmo box which is quite amazing really and um, so um, and that's how we do it we just connect it up like that all very, all very straightforward really once you've got the hang of it you know as I say it um no longer England only but all this land lying in the ring of the sea no longer only the castle in the water meadow but now also the castle on the rock in a city beautiful adamant and Edinburgh of the Scottish King. Scotland, of skirling mountains and lifting waters flowing in the dales of the land. Here, built by a queen, Balmoral Castle waits for it. So there we go. Um, the that's Mother, how, Castle you know, I, I put pictures on vintage televisions. It's um, very, very straightforward today, thank goodness. Yes, um, and um, it's nice to be able to restore them and get some sort of picture on them again obviously sometimes you come up with all sorts of problems the picture tubes are very low emission and um, and such like but or the line output transformer may need rewinding or something like that so um, it's not that straightforward still but um, it is possible with, with many hours um, you know, I must have spent many, many hours um, with this chassis on the bench just replacing the, ca the capacitors alone sort of thing. It's a very slow job for me, and um, but I enjoy that, you know. It, um, so there we go. And we'll switch the television off, and there it goes. Yeah, here's a, just, a little, just a little glimpse in the back of the um, set here. Obviously you can't see all the valves, but you can see a whole host of the, the lovely red EF50s there, all lined up, um, going right up to the front, and there's some more over that side as well. Um, and the little, the little, um, can we zoom out a bit? We? No, that's going the wrong way, as usual. You can see the little cathode ray tube there. Uh, this is the line output, line output transformer there in this box here um, here's these um, variable resistor controls that I was telling you these these are very irksome on Pi sets they do wear out and I think one or two are minus you know particularly the um, uh, frame hold and the frame linearity or the, I think it's the flat frame amplitude is just a bit dicky and obviously that's I believe what causes that um, you know um, 
doubling up of the picture when it when it the picture sort of folds that's the technical term when the picture folds at the bottom of the screen i'm sure it's one of these variable resistors that is um you can change you can change these to a, a round a pot resistor and on another pi i've had to do that because these are just so worn out unfortunately i think if the if the set's ever been stored in the damp obviously these are facing outwards you know, and, and yeah, if it's been stored in a damp shed, these can really deteriorate very quickly and um, just go, well, the resistance wire just falls off them basically and they um, then you have to change them. Well, thank you for watching this video and um, I hope it's been enjoyable to some, uh, both parts, the history of how I acquired this set and the fact that it's um, come back home to Northampton and my attempt at showing you how it still works after 70 years. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you everyone for watching my videos. Um, I was amazed, um, uh, this channel's barely been going a year, but um, how many people uh, watch my videos. So thank you to everyone. And um, please do come back. Uh, perhaps I don't say enough. Please do subscribe if you haven't. Um, for me, YouTube, uh, is doing things that you like um, you know I don't do necessarily things that get vast uh, views to me it's all about doing something that you're passionate and interested in and um, I think in a way sadly some of YouTube has lost that when I look around there are still people out there doing fantastic things on YouTube amazing things far better than I could ever do or uh, wish to do probably but on the other hand, I think some people are doing things just purely for views and when it's become you know, more of a financial interest, which I'm not interested in, it's, it's, to me it's a hobby and um, I hope to keep it that way. So thank you ever so much to everybody that watches these videos. And as I say, I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, video about the Pi uh, television. And um, as I said, if you want any more information, or you know anything, or you've got one, or you know anything about Abel's Music Shop in Northampton, or you have any memories of Abel's in Northampton, please do drop me a, a, a comment in the comments below, and it'd be lovely to hear from you. Thank you again to everyone, and hopefully see you very soon in another video. Bye for now.